Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit. The Lord be with you. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins together in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Invite you to say with me, oh, sorry, are we, are we saying or singing? I've, I've lost track. Saying thank you. <laughs> I invite you to say with me, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. And together we say the great hymn of praise of the church. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. I'll collect our special prayer for today. Loving God, your Son has chosen us and called us to be his friends. Give us grace to keep his commandments, to love one another, and to bear fruit which will abide through him who is the true vine, the source of all our life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. And the heading is, Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone without the water for baptism, baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Then they invited him to stay for several days for the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm, they, they have, have got, got him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. He, he has, has revealed his just deliverance in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make melody. Make melody to the Lord upon the harp, upon the harp and with the sounds of praise. With trumpets and with horns, cry out in triumph before the Lord the King. Let the sea roar and all that fills it the good earth and those who live upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the mountains rig out together before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. This is the word of the Lord. We've got the Gospel of John and the letter of John. <laughs> Just to confuse ourselves. 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with water only, but with water and the blood. And the Spirit is one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. There are three that testify the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his son. Those who believe in the son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I invite you to stand or sit as you're able as we sing together a new commandment I give unto you.
with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Glory. Jesus Christ. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be ever acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Now, I keep forgetting how much um, any, any of you or, or who of you uh, know of, of um, my own story, but um, I, I heard a call to the priesthood uh, before I'd finished school in about year 11, so... Uh, translating that sort of 16 or 17 uh, years old, uh, I, I became aware that, that I was called to the priesthood. Uh, and uh, I received excellent advice uh, from uh, our priest at the time, Father Roger Zorab, uh, known to many of you here. Um, wonderful, wonderful man. Um, and, uh, and he himself had received the call to the priesthood very young, uh, and, and he said, look, you, know, you, you can't be canonically ordained, uh, deacon until you're 23, priest when you're 24. Uh, so, so even if you go straight to theological college uh, from school, uh, there'll be a gap when you have finished your priestly training, but you cannot yet be ordained a priest. Uh, so he said, so go do something else uh, ha have a backup plan, uh, and if it is the call of God, well, it, it, it won't go away. Uh, and and uh, you know, he, he, was, he was entirely right uh, in every part of that. So I went to the University of Sydney, uh, and, and I did what in those days w was uh, called liberal studies. I think the degree doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I was sort of there during seven years or something when it did exist. Um, the idea was that it was a general degree. Uh, so you majored in an arts, uh, a science, uh, and, and did a, a level of advanced language study. Um, I did um, studies of religion for my arts. I did psychology for my science. Uh, and, and as I sat on the lawns uh, at the University of Sydney flicking through the the possible languages I could do before the start of semester, I discovered that they offered biblical Hebrew. And I was very excited uh, because I thought that as a priest you'd need Greek and Latin and that Greek and Latin would be taught at St John's College Morpeth when I went there. Uh, and, and, um, but, but I thought, well, when among the teachers in the faculty there were uh, experts on the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, Australian experts on the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, Rabbi Apple from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, uh, you know, really world-class Hebrew scholars. So uh, I, I was thrilled to, to study my Hebrew there because I thought, well, I, I'm, I'm going to get um, 
you know, a, a level there that, that, that St John's College at Morpeth simply doesn't have access to at, at that time. Um, so there I am, um, 18 years old, uh, in the University of Sydney. Uh, I lived in Wesley College, uh, which was at that time a college of the Uniting Church. Uh, and, and there I am um, doing my, my Hebrew. Um, I, th I think it probably was coming into winter, so you know, I was freezing away in my, my little, <laughs> little room with the wooden floorboards uh, high up in Wesley College. Uh, and, and, and I'm translating my Hebrew. Uh, and sometimes um, when I was in a share house later on, I'd have to go and do the washing up to warm my hands up enough to, <laughs> to write, to, to you know, do, do the, the letters for the Hebrew. But um, So I'm translating uh, Genesis. Now, hands up those who did French at school. Yes, yes, a few of us. Anyone do Latin at school? Yes, some German at school? No? Oh, oh there we are, Rob. <laughs> Terrific. Um, those who've done mm, re really almost any language in the world, except for English, almost, um, know that, that there's grammatical gender. That, uh, you know, so famously in French, sur la table, where, when something's on the table, the table is female. You know, now, to, to English speakers, of course, it's nonsense. <laughs> you know, it's a table. And, um, but but it, it, it's, just, it's just grammatical, you know, so, so, that, the, um, so that the articles match uh, the noun. So, too, in Hebrew, I, I, everything has a gender and, and, and there needs to be agreement um, among everything within the sentence. Sarah, I'm translating Genesis. Uh, the, the spirit moved upon the water. Uh, the spirit is grammatically female. Well, I mean, you, I practically fell off my, my little office chair. You, you can imagine. I, um, <laughs> Because this is hidden in English, isn't it? You know, when, when, when we have to rely on, on, on the scholarship and the translation of others, we are, mm, to some extent, um, un, un, unwilling um, receivers of, of whatever biases have shaped their translation, um, which is why churches for, of the Reformed tradition have for many years insisted that their priests learn the Hebrew and the Greek uh, so that at least sort of um, folk who don't have the luxury of that study are able to access some of that uh, through their clergy person. Throughout our Bible, God is described in this huge variety of ways. Uh, now, of course, part of that is because of the richness of human experience of God. And part of it is because all of our human language and poetry and, 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 and the highest forms of human art cannot encompass the infinite that is God's self. Our expressions are finite, limited uh, by, by, you know, the, the compass of our lives, uh, whereas God, uh, in God's eternity, is so far beyond that. So, throughout the Bible, there are all these multitude of rich images, uh, but, but sometimes we, we've been guilty of of narrowing them down a bit and, and of uh, not, not reading what's there in some ways. Now, some of us are enormously blessed, and I count myself as one of them, uh, to have uh, God as Father as a beautiful image, as, as one that is rich and life-giving. Tragically, we know that's not the case for everyone. Um, but also we need to bear in mind that, that even Father is only an image for God, uh, of God's reality, which is so far beyond what we can experience. Just like uh, the diamond must have many facets 
in order to sparkle, so too uh, we need many uh, facets of our image of God. Now again, we, we've got to be very careful not to reduce parenting roles uh, to stereotypes and caricature. Uh, that benefits no one. Uh, it, it's sort of a, a drawback of Mother's Day, is it not, that you know, we, we speak of the, the nurturing and caring role uh, of, of mothers and, and act as if it's only mothers or all mothers uh, who, who are in that role. And of course we know the human reality is infinitely more complex than that. Um, fathers should be nurturing, it's not the exclusive domain of mums. But our Bible speaks of God giving birth, as if panting in labour. Uh, our Bible uh, speaks of God uh, encouraging a child, and, and in Hosea 11, um, speaks we, without gender of, of of God being a parent who, who's encouraging the child to take the first steps. Um, and, and, and we write farther onto that and forget uh, the, that uh, throughout the Bible, God is spoken of as mother as well. Jesus describes himself as he enters into Jerusalem and, and the women of Jerusalem are weeping. Uh, he, he describes himself as a mother hen who, who longs to protect the chicks uh, under his wings. Uh, if we describe a Christian as born again, as often we do, well then who's the mum? Who's, <laughs> who's given birth? Um, indeed, in the first letter of John, uh, which we heard this morning, there's this rich imagery of us being brought to life uh, by Jesus through water and the blood. Uh, and forgive me, folks, uh, but... Yeah, what are we doing on Mother's Day if not celebrating those who've, uh, you know, nurtured and, and brought children to life? You know, when people are born and there's water and blood, well, it's a mum who's <laughs> doing the bleeding and, 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 and the waters of new life. There's a very real way in which the Bible draws on all of this rich symbolism uh, you know, and, and, and different parts of it speak to different people at different parts of their journey. Why does this matter? And, and look, very serious question. Well, it's part of truly knowing our own scriptures, you know, and I, I think that's not to be taken lightly, lightly that we try to strip away some of the accretions of human culture and, and, and read what is there. But there are even more pressing issues, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that these are issues of life and death. Unfortunately, we know that male violence towards women starts in society's attitudes towards women. That's where uh, it's allowed to, to fester and grow and, and permission is given for these ways of behaving. When women are regarded as less than, um, as, as um, you know, less important, uh, less intelligent, less capable, um, less valued, then women, tragically, along with their children, suffer lifelong damage. Uh, and I say it's an issue of life and death, and as, as we all know, at least one woman a week loses her life to a man who said he loved her. Uh, in Australia, that, that's just us, you know, that's, that's just what we currently, you know, they, they say the, the, the standard you walk by is the standard you accept. And, and, and as Australia, we're currently walking by one woman a week being murdered uh, by uh, a person who has been her partner. Now, not, not always current partner, sometimes she's tried to do all the inverted commas right things in, in getting herself uh, and possibly getting her children to safety, uh, and still she is killed. Now, the Bible tells us that all of humanity can be in God's image. And it's when we uphold that, it's when we uphold the, the equality of all of humanity in our ways of speaking of God, as well as in our ways of speaking of humanity, that all humanity is able to thrive and we're able to flourish into that fullness of life 
which Jesus tells us is his gift to us. The Lord be with you. Friends, I invite you to stand or sit as you're able as we together join uh, in the creed, uh, the belief of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to be seated or kneel as we pray for the world and for the church. We pray uh, for this fragile earth. We pray for the nations of the world, particularly for India. We pray for mothers worldwide, particularly when they face dangers in giving birth and hardship in caring for their families. God of grace, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our church, praying for Bishop Peter, with Bishop Sonia and Charlie. We give you thanks especially today for the work of Mothers Union and for all who support mothers in their ministries. We pray for our parish that we might be faithful to your call to show your love through our care in our community. God of grace, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for our community, giving thanks for those who are mothers to the uh, people who need it most. Praying for adoptive and foster carers and for workers in residential care. We pray for those mothers trying to find a safe home for their children and those trapped in cycles of dysfunction. We give you thanks for those devoted to ending family violence and we pray for the, that we might all take action in defense of the vulnerable god of grace hear our prayer pray for those for whom there is a hard day for those with a difficult relationship with their own mother and mothers with strained relationships with their children we pray for those who long for a child and those who have suffered a loss we pray for solo mothers and mums who experience postpartum depression we pray for that you will nurture, sustain and uphold all mothers. God of grace, yeah. hear our prayer. We give you thanks for mothers throughout the ages, particularly St Margaret of Scotland, and giving thanks for those of our mothers who now rest in your love. May we one day be joined with all your unsung saints in your eternal kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray together our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, unrighteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Let us stand for the greeting of peace. Christ has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace. come now to our offertory hymn, uh, hymn um, 333 in the Mission Praise Book. In loving kindness Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim.
for those who, who don't know, this um, prayer we pray uh, over the gifts uh, is formulated uh, as are uh, all the prayers of thanksgiving uh, within uh, Jewish households uh, that they pray as grace. Baruch hatah Hashem Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lahem min haaretz. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these good gifts to share. Accept and use them for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks that you raised him to life triumphant and exalted him in glory. By his victory over death, the reign of sin is ended, a new day has dawned, a broken world is restored and we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them, may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his friends, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into your, the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come.
seated as we see.
let us pray. Eternal God, <clears throat> sorry. Eternal God, giver of life, in the breaking of the bread we know the risen Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring new life to all creation. Together we pray. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Uh, friends, one of my notices concerns this incredible verse and veil. Uh, if you know anything about these, if you recognise them, please talk to me after the service. Um, if I had to guess, uh, I'd say they were from St Margaret's Jesmond. Um, and um, I, I found them uh, in the vestry as I was looking for the Mother's Union cloth, which I haven't found yet, but I've not given up hope. <laughs> but, um, and, and they are just, they're exquisite. Um, one of the ways in which the church has uh, been blind to the um, ministry of women uh, is when we have failed uh, to recognise the love of God and the artistry that, you know, somebody pouring all of her talents, uh, you know, in, into creating items used in the worship of God. Um, I, I encourage you to have a look at them. It is my hope, and um, it doesn't seem too far off, uh, that some of the students at the university uh, learning uh, the, the skills needed uh, in museums and so on uh, may want to, to do conservatorship on, on these to, to um, you know, clean them up in, in the proper ways uh, and, and I've got some leads I'm following on that. Uh, but I thought, given this is the last white um, Sunday for, for a little while, um, unless Ascension is white, I think we get to choose with Ascension, but I, I thought we'd use them while we could. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Now, a very, uh, very happy Mother's Day uh, to all among us who are mothers. Um, because we think that many folk will have other plans this morning, there's no morning tea after the service this morning, uh, because we hope that you get to, to go and, and spend it uh, with, with, with some of your family. Um, we, we're also very conscious of those whose Mother's Day plans have been thrown into disarray by potential outbreak in Sydney, but I've, I've not heard the news this morning, but it, it's not looking as bad as it might as of yesterday. Uh, but what a reminder for us all. Uh, and thank you so much to our wonderful welcomers who've been battling away with the technology to, to ensure that, that people are checked in with the QR codes uh, as they arrive. And once again, we've seen how absolutely vital uh, that is. You know, that, that's... That's when they, uh, when when the uh, Department of Health said, no, it, it it wasn't three barbecue shops he visited; it was four. Uh, you know, that's <laughs> and, and and then he, you know, went and got gas for the barbecue at the servo and the meat the next morning. Um, <laughs> poor man, the entire state laughing about him. But um, <laughs> the poor poor gentleman. Um, you know, the the electronic signing in just makes it so much easier and so much quicker when it's time for contact tracing. Uh, so thank you all for, for continuing to persevere uh, and, and thank you particularly to our welcomers for all your hard work. Uh, have there been any birthdays? No one that's owning up. Okay. <laughs> well, in that case, shall we stand and we'll ask for God's blessing on us all. The Lord be with you. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight, 
The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, the ones you love, the ones you pray for, today and always. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us sing together. Let all the world in every corner sing. Amen.